And it's so wild to me that so many women talk about narcissism, but the society today has just is just catering to narcissistic women. If I post a picture online, a bikini picture online, there's nothing my husband can do that could compete with that level of uh, accolade. Attention. Impossible. The, the compliments, the, the compliments, attention, the, the messaging, the you're so sexy and beautiful yeah. and all these different things from thousands or potentially around millions world, of men around the world who have money and all yeah. these things. Yeah, and there's nothing he can do. He can't post online and get the same reaction. And more wow. so, he can't give me the same level of validation. Oh my gosh. So what's happened is we've created a, a, a setup in society that means men have to compete with a level of validation they can't compete with. With, and if they go online, if they join Tinder that night, they can have so many more options than a man can because we've got filters and we've got all of these. Again, I'm, I really am privy to this myself. I'm not. I'm a filter queen. So, but the things I can do to manipulate male and validation to get more attention from men. Just val- soothe myself and to remind myself I'm above this. I don't need him. I can replace him. It's something men actually can't do. So they have to rely on pornography for that. They replace us with pornography and we replace them with likes wow. and comments on social media. Wow. How and did this happen? Like, why do, why do you think, is this a values thing, a lack of values thing? Is this a, okay, if I feel wounded or I feel some type of trauma, I need a, an emotional release. And so this makes me feel good. And then it's just a slippery slope into more and more. What's the, where does this, how does this start and when does it end? I think it comes from the fact that we've created a culture that whenever there's a problem, there's a temporary solution that doesn't get rid of the root. So what I mean by that is if there's a problem of intimacy for men and they're not getting women, there's pornography. If there's a problem of low self-esteem in women because they don't have meaning and purpose, they can post a few pictures online. We've created a way of solving problems that doesn't get rid of the root. So we're always seeking highs. And the problem with highs is they come with lows. So you end up having more problems, more low self-esteem, and then seeking bigger highs to get that kind of back to neutral state. So I think the problem comes with problems being solved by seeking highs and a real focus on kind of values that are very empty, empty materialistic values. So you are a beautiful, high-value woman if you're really, really beautiful. And you're a high value man now if you are really, really rich. Uh, but there's nothing to do with connection and intimacy that now gives us status. And so, and I think that's come from social media mainly. Where does this lead over the next three to five years with this narcissistic, you know, society, I guess, that's been built in this way? What happens for people in relationships? Are people able to find intimacy and connection and stay committed uh-huh. and be actually happy in in a healthy relationship or is it only to get worse it leads to intense and pervasive loneliness unfortunately really and it probably will only get worse unfortunately until we wake up to the impact of technology uh, both on men and women it's going to lead to a complete identity crisis external kind of extrinsic values that don't benefit anybody which then manifests in depression and loneliness self-inflicted depression and loneliness yeah when i say low depression and loneliness it's not like um, I, I have a disease or anything. It's self-inflicted through poor choices. So unfortunately, it's going to lead to uh, men not being able to commit to women because they can get all of the joys of sexual con- uh, relationships without having to invest. And women not being able to commit to men because they can get all the validation of male attention without having to adapt and change themselves according to the needs of the relationship. What happens when men and women never commit? Um, they find themselves in a, unable to put somebody else's well-being above their own. So we're creating people who are entirely individualistic, deprived of responsibility, and unable to care and nurture for others because they're not putting somebody else's well-being above theirs. When you are unable to commit, essentially you wake up every single day saying, what do I want to do? What do I want to do today? And as nice and as freeing as that is, it deprives you of human responsibility. And in order to truly become something, uh, we're designed to be responsible. We're designed to be valuable. We're designed to serve others. This is how we've evolved. So becoming completely individualistic leads to a sense of lonely narcissism, mm. I believe. What is the genera- What is the age generation of, in your opinion, of the highest amount of narcissistic men and women? Is it people from 15 to 22? Is it 20s to 30s? Like, what is the age group that you see as the most extreme narcissist? I would imagine it would be from 15 to 25. This is without actual any research onto it. I would imagine it's because 
they they um, raised to d- serve their desires, not serve others. We have raised children to serve themselves in every way, shape, and form. So whether that is through a, you know a pornographic interviews, se- sending each other Snapchats of each other nude, this is something that was alien. Like in our generation, it was unheard of. But the average twelve-year-old is now put under pressure to send nudes to the other average. And one thing I had really twelve-year-olds, twelve-year-olds. I used to be a teacher, so I used to experience this a lot. Where twelve-year-olds are sending nudes on sending Snapchat to each other, to each other, uh, yeah, coerced to all volunteer, a volunteer, just well, to I, get more attention, right? Yeah. Or to get. And what's so weird is when you work with children, you we're always told told about predators, and we're always told about sexual assault from old predators. But you would be so surprised at the level and age of sexual predators now. They're aged between 12 and 15 now. We're 12 to 15-year-olds are now becoming predatory because they're so saturated by sex that they've dehumanized connection and they see it as part of growing up. Well, I mean, why would a 12 or 13 or 15-year-old girl send a nude to another 12, 13 or 15-year-old boy? Uh, because they're growing up with role models who post on OnlyFans. They're growing up being told that you don't actually need an education. You can make $50,000 a month if you just post the right pictures online. So when you are told that and you are bored to death in a maths class and you're being told to learn uh, like, uh, you know, about parameters of a rectangle that you don't care about, or you can see a really sexy girl talk about how much money she's making, where is a child going to go? particularly when they're not raised in a home or environment which boosts their self-esteem and uh, emphasizes internal morals. So why are our children going to go? It's not their fault at all. It's the society we've created and what we've glamorized and highlighted for children. That's interesting because Martha, my girlfriend, she'll say that that her dad did a really great job when she was, you know, 10, 11, 12, 13, when boys started to show attention, right? Yeah. He did a really great job, I'm paraphrasing what she told me, that he used to say, listen, guys are going to tell you you're beautiful. And you already know that. Yeah. So don't be wowed when they say you're beautiful, you're pretty, you look attractive. Like, Uh know that you have other values to contribute. And if they don't see those other things, then, okay, just they're friends, you know, but don't buy into that type of game. Well, don't let that be the most interesting thing about you. And what I find a little bit strange about being online is I'll get a lot of comments about my makeup and my appearance or whatever it is, which is very, very nice. Um, but I didn't understand why that would even be part of the conversation. And I would imagine it's because they assume that if you have a certain appearance, why would you even bother working on your uh, education? Because they almost see it as binary. You, if you've got one, you don't need the other. Well, you absolutely need the other. You absolutely, because it's the only thing that will exist forever. Your looks is the only depreciating asset you have. Wow. So why would you want to derive your value from it and your self-esteem from it? It's, we know it's depreciating. 